Okay, got a bit of a simple project going here. Um, a buddy of mine from work was asking if I could do him a bit of a favor. He's got this hub. It's off of a three-quarter ton Dodge pickup. Now, apparently what was happening was uh, he needed to, needs to put new studs in this thing. And unfortunately, uh, the factory Mopar uh, studs don't quite fit the holes. The hole diameter here is about 600,000 and the uh, diameter of the uh, stud itself next to the uh, straight knurl where it's supposed to push in that's actually about 627 thousandths of an inch right next to the knurl. Now I do have a 627 reamer ironically I don't have a 5 8 so it's going to be a little bit of a trial and error on a couple of things here as to how I'm going to do this. Uh, one thing I'm definitely going to need to do is to be able to pick up the center of each of these holes. Now, realistically, considering the fact that I've only got eight holes to do, and, um, I mean, there's a little bit of a rough finish on the inside of here because of the studs that were pushed out of it, uh, with the, you know, there are vertical lines, um, etched into the edge there, just be, just or crimped into the edges from the uh, straight knurl on the old studs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of lathe work first so I can make an arbor, or not an arbor, but a uh, locating taper pin, if you will, uh, with a 5 8 on the uh, one end that goes in the, in the mill uh, collet, and a taper, a very gradual taper going so I can locate the center of the hole that way. It'll be within a couple thou, that'll be close enough for what we're doing. Now, I have material to do that with uh, over underneath the mill. Um, the only thing is, once I locate that, I've got to see how, I'm going, how the actual hole is going to work. What I want to try to do is I have a whole stack of these drill bits. They're 5 8 I mean, this, they're Chinese, they're import, whatever. And unfortunately, I've found that the uh, three flats ground into the shank they're supposed to be able to be gripped in a chuck are actually a few thou off center to the center line of the twist drill itself. So just for kicks and giggles, because I'm only going to be taking the, it's only going to be taking about uh, what 13, 14 thou off either side of the hole. As long as I'm very careful and I grip the drill bit in the in a collet right about here. Yes, I know that there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of flute there, but if I grip it there. I should be able to get a reasonably accurate hole. One advantage though for I have right now is I have this piece. It's a stub off of a Dodge half ton axle, cut off, whatever. But this area out here is not hardened like the rest of the shaft was. So I've actually got a practice piece. These holes are 600 thou as well. So if I can use one of these, I'll, I'll make my little locator tool uh, and then tr just give try a couple things, try the reamer and try the drill bit trick. I'm going to have to cut the shank off this one just to get it into the R8 collet. But I'll try a little trick, as I say, about actually um, seeing if that'll work and if that would allow for a 2,000 interference fit on the, um, on the shank there, not counting the, not counting the uh, ferrule, or not ferrule, the, the splines. Okay, so I need to make the locating dowel pin for, or well, taper pin, whatever, for uh, locating the centers of the holes. Now, I have lots of this stuff kicking around. It's quite handy, actually. I, well, let's just say that it worked when, before the uh, tie rod ends and track bars off the Dodge pickups hit the scrap metal bin, I go after them with the bandsaw, cut the straight sections out. It's it is t at this point some still kind of a mystery metal to me, but it actually cuts really nicely. I'm not sure what alloy it is, but it actually is reasonably strong. I haven't tried hardening it yet to see what its carbon content is. Um, if anybody knows what composition Dodge tie rod ends and track bars are made of, please let me know. But it's great stuff to work with, and well, <laughs> most importantly, it's free. Now, I'm going to be chucking this up, and I'll be doing the uh, turning in two different uh, spots. I'll be making the taper on this end, and then I'm going to hang it out of the chuck a fair ways, but I'm not too worried at the moment for that because it's fairly thick material, and I'm not going to be taking very heavy cuts. 
Uh, the other thing is I'm also going to be cutting at the same time, cutting in and then doing an undercut down to 5 eighths further up here somewhere so it'll fit the uh, 5 eighths uh, collet. Now, um, as far as uh, precision is concerned, as I say, if I put thin one or two thou, I think for this application it'll be fine. Yes, just mount it up like so. See if you can all see that there. Actually, I don't need, need to stick it out that far. Yeah, somewhere around there should be good. There. Now, set of speed. So, set our speed probably somewhere around. I could probably go 1500 if I wanted to. Let's just go for a thousand for now. Unfortunately for this lathe, I mean it's what I can afford, but uh, it'll run for now. Uh, unfortunately the speed setting selection is somewhat limited, so I just have to pick and choose what I figure is going to be good for the moment. Actually, look at that, I'm going to face the end off.
Actually, that's not half bad. Actually, that's not half bad. Yep, I like that. And the tip isn't completely razor sharp. And I'm okay with that because I'd rather not drive it through my, my palm if I'm dropping it or something. Unfortunately, I'm finding as I'm, maybe it's just I'm getting older or whatever, but I'm finding I'm a little more clumsy than I used to be. Seven thirty, seven thirty-nine, give or take. So we still basically have another hundred and ten thou to go to come off of it. That's a forty-five depth of cut. It's a twenty-five depth of cut, forty thou off by one minute. If you can read that, basically 656, 655, oh, well 656, but it's uh, also fairly warm. So we're just going to take another, I think we're going to play in danger, so we take another 30. According to the dials, anyway. Sometimes I'm still kind of suspect of how accurate these dials are.
625? Perfect. It's a little toasty. I'll probably lose a thou down to 624. The call will still grab it. I am okay with that. parting tool. Make sure the tool is squared the job. There we go. I know it seems silly and fairly simple, but this is something I've been wanting to make for a while just so I could locate, uh, so I can locate holes and things. So, next stop is over at the mill. We'll load up the uh, practice hub on a set of blocks and then uh, go from there. There we go. So, it's a little snug. So five eighths call it. Handy dandy little tool. My Ryobi 18 volt power drawbar. And now theoretically should be able to get a better light. Should be able to bring this down. And Roughly located with the table. Table, the X and the Y, and we are centered. Survey says, make sure the 
Calipers are zeroed and clean. Oh, that wound up in millimeters. Ha, huh, what do you know? 625. Bang on. Perfect. Which means, theoretically, yeah, we should be able to have a tooth out press fit on our studs and allow the uh, allow the splines there, the uh, knurled in splines, to engage. So I like that. Okay, so now that we have the real hub mounted up and I've unlocked the table, we can now find the center of our hole. Again, I'm just you know, using the taper of it and getting this, basically using the backlash of the table to my advantage. Lock two axes. Yeah, there we go. Centered. Those axes are locked. You can drop the locating tool out. Man, I've been wanting one of these for a while. And put our slightly modificated drill bit back in. Give it a quick schmutz with oil. Tickle at how that's coming out. There we are. Yeah, that'll be a nice interference fit once I actually press it in. So, yeah, as far as uh, what I'll do now is you probably don't want me to do want to watch me do eight of them at once, you know, all in a row, because I mean you have better things to do. So what I'm going to do is I'll cut here, and then next time uh, I'll bring in the uh, video, or next time I see you, I will have be setting up the. Uh, the hydraulic press and uh, we should be pressing the studs in. So this is my new toy. It's a uh, 10 ton hydraulic press. Got it from a uh, place called uh, Princess Auto uh, here in town. Um, the thing is I don't know where you're from if you're from say England or uh, down the states. I'm not sure the English equivalent to Princess Auto would be uh, down the states, probably Harbor Freight would be the closest I could think of for an equivalent. But yeah, it's uh, you know it's cheap enough, whatever. And but for the size of shop I have, and the budget I have, it'll it'll work for what I need. So nothing fancy, but at least now I have a press. I probably just dest almost destroyed my little vice. I was actually using that little vice for pressing little bushings and things into things. But uh, yeah, it's it's not really happy with that. So all right, let's get that pressed in. We need to have somewhere in which the uh, somewhere for the uh, stud to press into to have some clearance. Yet I also don't want to mess up the surface. <coughs> Using a couple pieces of scrap, just a couple pieces of scrap junk I had kicking around. This is a piece of aluminum from a project I did a while back for my buddy Doug, fixing his snorkel. That's a, a bit of waste material from that project. So if we put the stud in, and set it on. watching where I'm going with it. Try that again. Nice to actually have a small press at work. We have a 50 ton at home. We have a 50 ton at work. 
but again that's at work right now and I don't have it here. This press here is not going to live here forever. This is just, uh, there we go. This is just the only place I have for it at the moment. So there we go. One stud in place. So I have to do the other eight. Again, it'll be very similar. It'll be a very similar uh, process to do the other eight. So, or the other seven, I should say. Yeah, there are eight in total. I need to do the other seven. So um, I probably won't bore you with that. But uh, anyway, I'll get, those, uh, I'll get these pressed in. We have all the studs mounted in there now. Uh, pressed into place. It was a nice fit. Uh, about a two thousandth interference plus the splines on the uh, or knurled splines on the studs. I'm happy with how that went. So well, one final thing to do, like I say, before I actually tore the um, or went to drill the holes out, I took the wheel speed sensor out and put this plug in place. It's actually just a little cap off of a, an oil bottle nipple for like gear oil sort of stuff. So that, big thing to remember with these, especially this, this style of uh, uh, wheel speed sensor, they'll often have shims like that to set the correct air gap. And if you don't put those shims back in place, then um, the uh, pickup has the, runs the risk of contacting the tone ring on the inside. But I didn't want to hit it with the drill bit or otherwise damage it hitting the parallels or anything. So I just have to spin that back in. Spin the little Allen head bolt back in. Make sure that's snug. Click. Wipe up any excess oil. I can rewrap the wheel speed sensor wire around it. How it came. Because I want to put it back in the box for the guy. He gave it to me in the box that it came in. So I want to put it back together for him. And there we go. There we go. One job out the door, I can give it back to my buddy tomorrow. It's uh, Sunday night right now, actually, so thankfully uh, the better half has uh, been watching Munchkin for the afternoon, so it actually gave me a chance to come back out and play in the shop. It feels good. I haven't done it in a while. So anyway, um, yeah, that's it for this project, and we'll get on to the next one.